Hey everyone, so we're still at LTX 2019, giving Linus yet another shout out. I think at this point it's becoming a bit absurd, but he did fly us out here and make it happen. So thank you, Linus. And I'm joined now by Adam from Epos Boxes, the channel. Yep. Hi. Adam's done some really good work on streaming and streaming education, I think is, is the correct way to describe yeah. it. So our topic today is uh, common misconceptions on streaming or streaming settings, and in general, uh, streaming you're doing it wrong. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of that. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Conductonaut Liquid Metal. Conductonaut is what we've used in all of our liquid metal and D-lit thermal tests, capable of dropping CPU thermals significantly when replacing the stock thermal interface. Lower CPU thermals don't just allow better overclocks, but also lower noise levels because the transfer efficiency is increased. The mix of gallium and indium makes for a thermal conductivity of 73 watts per meter Kelvin, outclassing traditional pastes significantly. Learn more at the link in the description below. Where do we want to start with this? Let's, I guess let's assume a, a base software solution, maybe OBS or something, right. narrow it down a bit. So from there, what, what do you commonly see people either they need the most help with to start streaming or they most frequently get incorrect with the setup? I mean, the big thing I see, and this has been the case even with just making YouTube videos, not even just streaming, but people want to jump in and regardless of what they're doing, they want to be the highest number. So they want 1080p, they want 60 FPS, even if they're streaming from a laptop that can barely run the game and aren't, isn't 1080p, but they want the biggest number, even if they can't stream the bitrate for it. And streaming, getting like a good image quality is all about balancing everything. And so most people should be streaming at 720p and, you know, using reason instead of just jumping for the higher numbers. That's, that with something like Twitch too, where you, you, you really do have a bitrate right. budget. You've got a cap, you can't, even if you go above to the eight megabits per second, which is a gray area at the moment, that's not really enough for a great 1080p image, even on slow, on X264, any of that, like it is not enough. And you will literally just see a direct image quality spike by just lowering your resolution, be it 720p or all the weird options OBS gives you for 864 or whatever. Just don't aim for the biggest numbers because you can't support it. Yeah, I guess if you think of it as a budget, you're burning budget on increasing to 60 FPS, right. increasing to 1080p. And as you increase those things, I guess uh, it, it's a, even if the stream comes out as 1080p 60, like it's fluid, there's still image quality loss. Right. Yeah, so. Pixelization, artifacting, intermittent stutters that you may not notice or aren't recorded. Um, and a big thing that I recorded a video for, but I haven't figured out how to format because it sounds so obvious, is a lot of games, especially for console streamers, are running at 30 FPS. Oh, yeah. So don't spend your streaming budget on running it at 60 FPS because your <laughs> game isn't running there. Your webcam's probably not running there. <laughs> Aiming for 60 FPS is not the fix all, for, but everyone wants the highest frame rates now. And 30 FPS is fine for a lot of cases. So if you have a, a webcam in the corner that can do 60 and you've got the game that can do maybe 30 max for the console, you recommend just running everything at oh, 30? Yeah. Absolutely. Just match and, it. And you can honestly, you can probably get better quality out of your webcam by dropping that to 32 if your game's running at 30 because it'll run at the slower shutter or, or yeah, slower shutter speed and get more light in and webcams do better at 30 than 60. Like your, your webcam does not matter in terms of frame rate. Right. right. So other other than budget of bitrate and resolution uh, frame rate. What are the next suggestions? We've got we have a, a lot of options for encoding, mm -hmm. like an insane amount of options for encoding. And there's uh, CPU side encoding, GPU side encoding, NV encoder, H.264 uh, on CPU. Where do you start with that? <laughs> like, let's 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 list maybe by component, I guess, because if you have okay. too low end of a GPU, right, you probably shouldn't do NV encoder or something. Uh, I don't know, assume like a, a mid-range system. Maybe you have like a 3600 and a 5700 or something, or a 3600 and a 2060. If you're on the 2060, well, okay, here's the thing. At the moment, AMD's encoder is hella broke. It is really <laughs> bad. I've spoken with people, it's being worked on. Don't know when it's being fixed, but it's not really usable, period, unless you're streaming to YouTube at like, 10, 15 megabits per second. No, no, for, for, uh, our, for the Radeon cards, right? Yes, so any, any Radeon card going back to RX 480, like all of them are, it's it's literally broken. There is something <laughs> literally wrong with it. Okay, um, that simplifies that part of the equation. Right. The, you can use it for recording at high bit rate, but for streaming, it's not an option. In terms of X264, NVENC, and Quick Sync, avoid Quick Sync at all costs as well. It works, it actually runs performance-wise really amazing. Image quality issue? Image quality okay. is pretty poor. There, 
newer generation stuff, starting with ninth gen and some of the stuff they're working on, is actually doing some really cool stuff. And they have the only GPU accelerated VP9 encoder, by the way. Okay, yeah. Not yeah. useful right now, but really cool. But when it comes to X264, you, there is a balance of what resources you have versus what you're actually trying to achieve performance-wise with your live stream. And the big common miscon or common conception, I guess, miss or not, is you want to use X264 because it's better quality. But if you're on, say... If we hear that a lot. If you're on like an APU or a lower end processor, you're not running your stream at anything slower than very fast or super fast, at which point NVENC is more than good enough. It is gonna blow your stream out of the water performance wise or and quality wise in most cases. If you're on a 3600, especially the 3900, the 3900 at the moment can work magic. Knock it down to X264 medium, don't ask any questions. Just move, move on. Yep, yeah, you're good. You yeah. can run pretty much anything on it. But when you're on, Intel side, because they have less threads at the moment and it's not as the same, or you're on a lower end system, I would do tests. That's the big thing. No one does any streaming tests. They're just like, I went live and it didn't work. What's wrong? You can literally, you can make a new profile and make it to where it records the exact same settings as your stream settings. And there is still some slight difference once it gets up to Twitch, but overall, you'll get to see what your performance are, your performances. If it's not holding the frame rate, don't use that setting. Lower it, keep, you know, aim, aim high, but start setting it back. Do like, one minute long segments in like a training match in Overwatch or you know whatever your game you're using and just keep setting it back until you got perfect performance and then I think one of the most common things talking about GPU and CPU uh, encoding options one of the most common things is still the discussion that GPU is always worse quality right so just strictly talking about streaming like game streaming what most people do or, or webcam maybe if you're on Twitch and do both how do you feel about GPU stream quality with NV Encoder these days? I mean, like, do you default to that? I do, actually. Okay. I have been using it for, and obviously with recording, it's a little bit different, but I have always defaulted to it for most of my setups. I currently, for my game streaming, I actually do two PC setup, but I was running into the utilization issue mm -hmm. where that's a whole nother bottleneck, but Windows is working on that. Um, but I default to it because especially on the Turing cards, which includes the 1660 and 1660 Ti, not the 1650. Right, right. Quality is more than good enough for most people. And here's the thing is people always want like the best quality, but when you're first starting streaming, streaming to your friends, watching on their phones, they, they don't care. They, they yeah. don't. Audio quality is far more important. The, the conception that, or the idea that it is lower quality is from much older cards and then AMD's cards at the moment is like super fast equivalent, which is very low, mm. but it is improving. And the thing is, X264 is optimized for like movies, TV shows. There, you, you can actually, if you start fine tuning the options enough, you can see that the quality optimization is for like a single subject in the center of your frame and everything to the side starts to fall apart. Okay. That's not how games work. Right. Games are meant to see everything in focus and the, the GPU encoders are specifically designed for game streamers. They were designed with this purpose in mind. And so we're gonna see over the next five or so years maybe, depending on how long NVIDIA drags their generations, yeah. that- <laughs> How long they can stretch right, it out, right? That it's yeah. gonna start passing it up because of those fine-tuned optimizations, because game streaming is a whole different ballpark and it is built for that purpose. Any other uh, major misconceptions, mistakes, things? If you're trying to help someone get a good stream going, you've given them some good advice now. Are there any final points you wanna throw in there? Don't listen to the people who tell you to drop your frame rate to 48 FPS. <laughs> because frame pacing and it just turns out very poorly. Test, test, test and focus on your audio quality. If you're using a webcam, just a little pointer. I've been trying to like sprinkle in nuggets in all of my <laughs> videos now. Don't set it to 1080p. The C920, the C922, those aren't cameras with actual 1080p native resolutions. You will actually get the best image out of it at like 640 by 360. And if it's in the corner of your screen, it's gonna look great. Now obviously you're just chatting full screen thing might not, but again, people aren't going to care. You want the best perceived quality, not the highest resolution number. And I really want to break down that wall of, I want the biggest number because- we're... Yeah, bigger number, not necessarily better. Yeah. So uh, I guess the, the biggest piece of advice then is try a few of these things and genuinely try them, get them yep. right, get them right the first time. Make a second Twitch account if you need to, to like stream for an hour and see how it goes. You don't want to get live, especially if you already have a following. As I see people who have an established following jump in and they're like, I'm just gonna try this new software or like Streamlabs OBS. Like people will jump right. in and then the stream will fall apart and they'll just be on social media yelling at the capture card companies, at the software companies, like yelling at someone for ruining their stream when they didn't bother to test it ahead of time. So there's your advice from Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Some really good stuff in here. Uh, do check out his channel, Epos Box. We'll link it below. And he's got some really good streaming 
topics on there. So you've been working with Ryzen 3000, working mm -hmm. with AMD 5000 series, and that'll be all in the link in the description below. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. We'll see Absolutely. you all next time.